morning, friends. Yesterday was such a beautiful day. Lucy and Sam and I went outside for a walk. We went to a farm and the, the fields were really muddy and there were lots of little pools and puddles and ponds that we found. And I wanted to teach you about them because they're very important for amphibians and insects. Um, they're called vernal pools. So I wrote down vernal pool. And amphibians are animals like frogs and salamanders. Oops, I can't put that word there. Salamanders. And frogs and salamanders, um, their life cycle is very similar. They start as eggs. Um, the adults lay these big egg masses. Um, so there are like hundreds of eggs all clumped together in a little clump, and you'll see them in the video I'm about to show you. They look very similar, so it's hard to tell frog eggs from salamander eggs. And then you'll also see um, an insect larva. So the larva is the baby insect. Um, after it hatches, it's a lot of insects start their life in the water. The one that you're going to see in the video is a caddisfly. So when a caddisfly is an adult, it's like a fly that would fly around your house. Um, but when it's a baby, it lives in the water, just like dragonflies and other insects that start their life um, in the water. So um, I'll show you the video of the vernal pool that Lucy and Sam and I found. And then I'm going to read you a book called Over and Under the Pond. It's not about a vernal pool, but it is about a pond, and they share a lot of the same animals. Vernal pools are especially important because they dry up in the late summer. So they're not ponds all year round. They're only ponds in the springtime when the snow is melted. And so they don't have big predators like fish that live in them. Fish would love to eat these little baby animals. So we still have these animals in, in ponds and in lakes. Um, but they have a better chance in a vernal pool because they can grow without being eaten by fish. All right, so Lucy and Sam and I are in a big field. It's a farm. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and we noticed yeah. in a puddle, there's, there are these big puddles. The ground is very wet. There are Angel some pond. eggs. And it's a vernal, it's, yeah, it's like a vernal pond where and our daddy? amphibians and insects can... And be babies and be safe. Oh, okay, you want to show them your boots? Yeah, it's super muddy. So if you look closely, hang on, if you look closely at what's in the picture, Sam, can you put your foot down for a second? You'll see there are two egg masses. So those could be frog eggs or they could be salamander eggs, some kind of amphibian. I'm not sure what. Every little black dot that you see is going to be an animal. And then around it, there are little things moving. And I think those are caddisfly larvae. So if you see, let's see if I can zoom in on one here. And one over there. Look really closely and see. Oh yeah, can you see that little insect moving around under there? Yeah. That's a larva of a, a kind of fly called a caddisfly. And what they do is they, they build their, Hi, they kind of build a shell out of the things that they find. Mommy, There's another one this, moving over there. Oh, so the ones that we're seeing here have, um, they found little pieces of straw that they're using to start their little home on their backs. Uh, mommy, help. Now I'm going to read you the book Over and Under the Pond by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Over the pond, we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, Mom says. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We are paddling over them now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. 
Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three. They slip off and away, splash, gurgle, sploosh under the pond. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close, Wed red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. So this is the caddisfly larva right here. And when Lucy and Sam and I went to the, um, took the video from the vernal pool, you'll see a caddisfly larva that's just starting to build its home. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There, on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. So this is the life cycle of a frog. First, it's an egg. Then it's a tadpole with no legs. It looks kind of like a little fish. And then it starts to grow its back legs and then it starts to grow front legs, and then its tail gets shorter and shorter until um, it has no more tail, and then it's a full-grown frog. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step, and strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, a dragonfly larva. Under the pond, dragonfly larva watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster fast jaws. So a larva is um, the younger stage of an insect. So after it's born, it looks the dragonfly looks like this, and then it um, goes through a big change and it becomes a dragonfly that flies out of the water. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. There's the crayfish down there trying to escape the raccoon. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto shore as a far off loon calls good night. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond, the prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. and the hidden world under the pond. And then in the back, there's a lot of information about the different um, animals that the author and illustrator showed us in the book. This one is about caddisfly larvae. 
we can read that another day. I'm using about tadpoles and bullfrogs. Thanks for listening.